Today we're gonna revisit everybody's favorite topic of pinch harmonics. I live for this shit. Now I made a video tutorial about how to do pinch harmonics years ago, which you can check out right here. So this video isn't gonna be so much about how to do them. It's gonna be more about the three big mistakes that I see and hear guitarists make all the time that make pinch harmonics way, way harder to learn and master than they should be. Let's get into it. The first mistake that I see very often with pinch harmonics is not understanding all three parts of a pinch harmonic motion. And I talked about in my other videos how guitar technique is very simply the motions your hands do to get the notes to come out the way you want. And if you're having a hard time with any guitar technique, and pinch harmonics is obviously one of them, it means you need to get really, really clear on what are all the parts, all the components of a pinch harmonic motion. So here they are. The first one is very simple. All you do is just do a simple downstroke on the note you wanna apply the pinch harmonic to. This should hopefully be very obvious. No surprise here, I hope. The second step is what produces the pinch harmonic sound. What you do is, right after playing a downstroke, you touch the string with the thumb. And when I do that, you'll hear that the harmonic starts to come out. Observe. Now, in my other tutorial about pinch harmonics, I described these two things as basically one event. I said you want to strike the string with the pick and the thumb at basically the same exact time. And the reason I said that is because when you're playing pinch harmonics in the context of a lick or a guitar solo, there's no time to do two separate events. You kind of have to think about, visualize, and practice doing these things as virtually one simultaneous event. Observe. <laughs> Now, I'd never be able to do pinch harmonics this quickly if I was thinking about them as two separate events. There's just no time for that. Now, I said there are three parts to a pinch harmonic, but I only talked about two so far. What's the third part? The third part is you want to remove the thumb from the string immediately after you touch the string with the thumb to let the harmonic ring out. If you don't do that, the harmonic is gonna be muted by the thumb itself. Observe, here's how not to do it. <laughs> Notice how the harmonic was muted by the thumb staying on the string for too long. That's obviously not what you want. Here's the right way to do it. Notice how my thumb is going to pop off the string the moment the harmonic starts to ring to allow it full sustain, like this. And of course, to make the harmonic sound really good, then you wanna add some vibrato to it like I was doing before to get it to really scream and have full sustain, like this. So what I want you to get out of this is understand the three individual components of the pinch harmonic motion and practice them as slowly as I did where you do the downstroke, then you touch the string with the thumb, then you release the string immediately to let the harmonic ring out. This is going to allow you to process the motion with your brain and with your hands and really ingrain them in your muscle memory really well. And then you can practice combining or speeding up the first two steps of the downstroke and touching of the string with the thumb to make the harmonic to come out consistently whenever you want. And of course you wanna play around with how you hold the pick as well. So you don't wanna to have too much of the pick sticking out from your grip. You wanna get the thumb really close to the tip like this. So when you're striking with a downstroke, the thumb follows up immediately after, which is why I said these first two steps are almost like one thing. And that's what's gonna allow the pinch harmonics to come out on command. The second big mistake people make when they practice pinch harmonics is they try to do them way too fast and they never give their ears and their brain time to listen and to process the sounds that are coming out of the guitar or from their amplifier and to tell if they're on the right track with pinch harmonics or not. For example, let's say you're trying to do a pinch harmonic on the seventh fret of the G string. Here's how not to practice it. Notice how fast I was playing all the notes. There was no time for me to stop and listen to each note and decide if it was a good pinch harmonic or not, or if it was somewhere close to being good or, or somewhere in between. And because of that, all that practice time was a complete waste since I didn't learn anything about where to position my hand or how to position it to get the harmonics to come out. You blew it! 
Here's a better way to do it. You play a note and assess. Okay, that was a pretty good solid pinch harmonic. From here I just add some vibrato to it and it's gonna sound better. Let's try another one. That was not so good. So in this case, there was a bit of a delay between me striking the string and touching it with the thumb. Let's try it again. Also not good. Let's try it again. Not good. Let's move the hand a little bit closer to the pickup. Boom! That's the position. That's the sweet spot. You see? By a little bit of trial and error and listening and observing where my hand is right after the note that was good or not so good, I was able to give myself feedback exactly what to correct and what to adjust to get the harmonic to come out more consistently. Now of course your hand position is going to vary slightly depending on what interval of the harmonic you're trying to hit or what fret you are playing with the fretting hand. We'll talk about that a little bit later on in this video. My point is you want to give yourself that time to process what your hands just did, what the outcome of that was, and decide if you need to make an adjustment or if you want to stick with that and reinforce that motion over and over in your muscle memory. That is how you train a skill, especially one like pinch harmonics. And the third big mistake I see all the time is lack of string noise control. So this happens when somebody plays a pinch harmonic, and especially when they try to do some vibrato, but their strings are not being muted at all, and so the harmonic just is drowned out by all kinds of sloppy string noise like this. That sounds like a mess. Now fixing this is actually pretty simple. All you need to do is make sure that you're muting in some way the lower strings and the higher strings around the string you're applying the harmonic to. In my case, I mute with the heel of my palm and also sometimes with the ring finger of my picking hand so that when I do pinch harmonics, it's clean every single time. <laughs> There's no noise because the picking hand takes care of that. And the last thing I want to talk about with pinch harmonics is the topic of consistency. One issue you may run into is you practice pinch harmonics, let's say in this A minor pentatonic box, and it's all clean, it's all consistent, it all sounds good, that's great, but the moment you change keys or the moment you even move up to a different position of the A minor pentatonic scale, all of a sudden you're going to start to find that your pick needs to be in a slightly different position relative to the pickups or relative to the strings to get the harmonics to come out. This is normal. Now you might already know that pinch harmonics aren't just random sounds or feedback noises that you can get when you have distortion on. They're actual pitches that you play similar to pitches you play when you fret notes on guitar. It's just that they are simply a certain interval higher than the note you're fretting. So for instance, you can have a pinch harmonic that's a third higher than the note you're on, or the fifth higher, or an octave higher, or some other interval higher. And great guitar players who really mastered pinch harmonics, they know exactly what interval of a pinch harmonic they want to hear in the lick you're, they're playing, so make sure it's in tune and in key with the rest of the solo, and they memorize exactly where their hand needs to be for that pinch harmonic to come out consistently, and that is what what they practice. That is how they practice when they work on pinch harmonics. And this is what allows them to nail pinch harmonics consistently like 90% of the time or more when they play them on stage under, you know, strobe lights or when their hands are cold or whatever. That is where that consistency comes from. So what that means for you when it comes to pinch harmonic consistency is basically two things. One, if you want to avoid the tedious task of memorizing the hand position for every single pinch harmonic on every string, on every fret, everywhere in the fretboard, if you don't want to do that, take whatever lick you're practicing where you want to have pinch harmonics, decide exactly what pinch harmonic interval you want to hear, then find it on guitar, memorize that hand position for that particular lick, for that particular key, and practice with that hand position all the time, which is why you want to be watching your picking hand when you're practicing pinch harmonics very closely. And secondly, get familiar with your specific guitar and your specific pickups. What I mean by that is there's one general area on the guitar body, usually it's going to be somewhere closer to the neck pickup, where you're going to be likely to hit some kind of pinch harmonic pretty consistently, no matter what key you're in or what lick you're playing or where you are on the fretboard. So when you're playing something you haven't rehearsed and you're looking to get a pinch harmonic, simply put your hand in that general position and you'll know that you're going to be very likely to get some kind of a pinch harmonic out 
when you need it. It may not be the exact interval you're looking for, but at least it's going to be a nice, fat, juicy pinch harmonic that's going to scream. Now, one more thing I want to say about pinch harmonics. Even though I explain it like this, where you do a downstroke, then you touch the string with the thumb, and then you remove the thumb, and I showed you that removal of the thumb by flicking the hand, flicking the thumb and the pick away from the strings. That's not entirely accurate. In real life, that's not exactly what happens. If you notice, when I actually do a pinch harmonic in the context of a lick, or when anybody good does a pinch harmonic in the context of a lick, they keep the pick really close to the strings. They keep the pick inside the space be between the strings. They don't actually flick the pick outside of the strings like I did. Observe. <laughs> So, as you saw, when I was playing pinch harmonics, both on some longer notes to sustain and some faster ones, I kept the pick pretty close to the strings at all times, and that's what allowed me to do harmonics consistently, even in the context of some moderately faster runs. And I'd never be able to do this if I let the thumb and the pick flick away from the strings every time I wanted the harmonic to sustain. But the reason I showed you the motion with flicking the thumb and the pick away from the strings is because I wanted you to see it in an exaggerated way, so the way you practice, there is zero doubt in your mind of exactly what type of motion is going to allow your harmonic to sustain. But once you get the motion down, then you want to start making it as efficient as possible because remember, you aren't going to get any extra credit points. Your harmonic isn't going to sustain any longer or sound any better if you move the pick further away from the string. It's just going to make it harder for you to transition into whatever you need to play next. So keep the thumb, keep the pick as close to the string as you can possibly get away with while still allowing the harmonic harmonic to ring out. That's the goal. So there you go. Eliminate these three mistakes that are your practicing and pinch harmonics are going to start to feel a whole lot easier very soon. If you want some help with building your guitar speed, hit the link below or go to the page that's on the screen right now and I'm going to show you a free one hour masterclass called Guitar Speed Formula. What it is is a way to build speed without doing any slow practice. And if you have just 15, 20 minutes to practice and do what I tell you in this masterclass, you'll be very surprised at how quickly your speed begins to improve. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to this channel and hit the bell so you're notified every single time I upload a new video just like this for you. This is Mike Filipov, guitar practice expert from practiceguitarnow.com. I'll see you next time.